Okay, uh, welcome to introduction to structures. This is a uh, problem five, and it's about moment of inertia for an I section. Previously, in previous videos, we have been studying reactions, bending moments, shear forces, and axial forces for simple supported and cantilever beams. Once we have exhausted the analysis of these internal forces, it's time to start thinking about the distribution of stresses on a cross section. But previously to the definition or to the calculation of the shear forces, it is necessary to deal with the geometrical properties of the cross sections. And one of the most important properties, apart from the area, is the moment of inertia. So in the first place, because uh, several cross sections as I sections um, rectangular hollow sections and other sections are formed by a collection of uh, rectangular uh, or rectangles, it is important to start um, studying the barycentric moment of inertia of a rectangle. So if we have a rectangle, a cross section that is a rectangle, as you can see in the screen, and we easily can locate the centroid G of this cross section in the middle of the, of the, of the section, and we can define as well a couple of axes X and Y, these axes are called barycentric, uh, barycentric axes. Uh, they are called barycentric axes because they pass through the center of the, or the barycenter of the cross section. So in the first place, we are going to define a couple of formula that allowed us to establish the value of the barycentric moment of inertia of this rectangle. This rectangle have a base equal to B and a h equal to h, and the formulas for the moment of inertia regarding the axis x is equal to b multiplied by h cubed divided by 12. If you are looking for the moment of inertia about the axis y, which is the perpendicular axis to axis x, um, the formula will become h, which will be the base for, for this rectangle now, b cubed divided by 12. So basically it's the same formula, but depending on the axis we are taking as a reference, the, the formula will work in one way or another. Another thing that is important to mention is this cross section, this rectangular cross section is double symmetric. This is mean that is symmetric regarding the axis X and regarding the axis Y at the same time. So this will be an advantage in the future when we, do, when we deal with the uh, moment of inertia for uh, I sections and rectangular hollow section or circular section or circular hollow sections as well. So as an example, let's uh, calculate the barycentric moment of inertia of this, uh, of this um, rectangular cross section. In this case, we have the dimensions in millimeters and the base is 12 millimeters, the height is 28 millimeters. So the moment of inertia regarding the axis X will be 12 multiply by 28 cubed divided by 12 equal to 21,952 millimeters to the fourth. Remember that always the moment of inertia is a distance to the fourth by definition. So the moment of inertia regarding the axis, the vertical axis YY is equal to 28 multiplied by 12 cubed divided by 12, which is 4,032 millimeter to the fourth. So as you see, it's very, very simple to establish the value of the moment, the barycentric moment of inertia. This is barycentric moment of inertia because it's referred to the barycentric axis. But of course, you can calculate the moment of inertia regarding any other axis. For example, if you have to calculate the moment of inertia around the axis AA, you have to calculate anyway the barycentric moment of inertia because the, by definition, the moment of inertia regarding this new axis parallel to the axis XX will be equal to the barycentric moment of inertia regarding the, ax, the barycentric axis X plus the area multiplied by the distance between these two um, axes squared. So if we do the example as we did before, the barycentric moment of inertia will be 12 multiplied by 28 uh, cube divided by 12, this is the barycentric moment of inertia uh, Ixx plus the area, which is 12 times 28, because it's the area of a rectangle, and multiplied by 30 millimeters, the distance between axes square, and all of this is equal to 324,352 millimeters to the fourth. As you see, 
if you increase the distance uh, to the axis you are referring the, the moment of inertia, the moment of inertia increases considerably, as you see from the result for this exercise, if you compare with the previous ones. These are the moments of inertia for the barycentric axis. We are around 21,000 and 4,000, but the moment of inertia around an axis, which is 30 millimeters from the centroid, increase its value in one order of magnitude reaching 324,000 millimeters to the fourth. With this concept, we are going to be able to establish the moment of inertia for more complex, for more complex cross sections. So uh, this is the, the cross section I wanted to introduce in this video. As you know, uh, beams can um, have different um, cross section, can have T section, I section, a rectangular hollow section and many others, but we are going to focus the attention in the I section in this particular video. So an I section is a cross section that has this uh, shape and uh, have basically two flanges and a web, which is this uh, rectangle in the middle. Um, this uh, cross section is double symmetric as the rectangular cross section because you see the symmetry around um, regarding X and regarding Y. And the centroid is very easy to locate because it's in the middle of this double symmetric cross section. So it's half of the base, half of the height, and this is the location of G. So uh, G, the centroid, is known as well as a center of gravity in some text. So it's, it's important to, to mention that. So the I section is composed then by three rectangles. Two of them are the flanges, the flanges in blue and the web in black. And every one of them will have an area. Every one of them will have a base and a height. And every one of them will have a centroid, as you see in the screen. And there will be as well a centroid for the whole I section. As you see, the, the center of the whole I section is the same center as the the center of the web because the double symmetry that this cross section present. So um, what we are going to do is we are going to need to, to, to evaluate the, the moment of inertia of these three uh, rectangles to establish the moment of inertia of the I section, which is composed by these three rectangles. So here we have an example. So we have two flanges, the same size. So the flanges have a base of 160 millimeters and a height of 16 millimeters, and the webs have 20 millimeters uh, as a base, and the height is 200 minus 16 and minus 16, which is 168 millimeters. This is the height of this black rectangle in here. So we can locate easily the centroid and the uh, barycentric axis in this uh, cross section because it's double symmetric. And another distance we are going to, to find uh, useful is the distance from the centroid of this blue rectangle, which is one of the flange, the top flange of the cross section, and the axis X, which is the axis of reference to calculate our moment of inertia. So the moment of inertia of the I section of the I section will be the summation of the moment of inertia of the web, which is 20 the base multiplied by 168 cubed divided by 12, and we have the barycentric moment of inertia of this rectangle in black. And this will be the not only the barycentric moment of inertia, it will be the moment of inertia regarding the, the, the barycentric axis for the whole section. So this is the only thing we need to calculate in terms of the web. For the flanges, for the flanges, we will have two moments of inertia. The barycentric moment of inertia regarding an axis, a local axis that passes through the centroid of the flange, and the moment of inertia produced by the distance between this barycentric axis of the rectangle and the barycentric axis of the whole cross section. Because we have two flanges and they are the same, we have these two in here, so we are going to multiply by two the quantity we are going to calculate between brackets. And in the bracket, we have the barycentric moment of inertia of the, a flange, which is 160 multiplied by 16 Q divided by 12, plus the area of the flange, 160 times 16, multiplied by 20, 92 squared, which is the distance from the barycenter of the um, flange 
to the axis X, which is the axis where we are calculating the moment of inertia. Doing this operation, we find the moment of inertia of the whole uh, I section equal to 51 million 347,627 millimeters to the four. If we are interested in looking for the moment of inertia regarding the axis, the vertical axis Y, in this case, we need uh, to do more or less the same thing. So we start with the web. The web have a base of 168 millimeters multiplied by 20 cubed divided by 12. And this is the, the, the Y axis is very centric. So there is no need to add any area and multiply by any distance. And for the flanges, we have two flanges, the same size. And the base is 16, as you see here, multiply by 160 cubed divided by 12. In this case, we don't need to multiply by the area and by the distance the square because this axis Y is very centric for um, the flanges and for the webs at the same time. Doing the calculation, we found that the moment of inertia regarding the axis Y is 11,034,667 millimeters to the four. As an alternative, and when you have double symmetric cross-sections, you can run the calculation of um, the moment of inertia regarding the axis X in this example, uh, in this particular case, doing this. So in the first place, you consider that you have a big rectangle that is uh, in correspondence with the whole section. So you calculate the moment of inertia of a rectangle, basically 160 multiplied by 200 cubed divided by 12, and you have the moment of inertia of the whole rectangle. You have to diminish this moment of inertia because this uh, cross section is not solid and you have these two holes in here between the flanges and the webs. So you have basically these two holes, as you can see in the, in the figure, and you have to diminish the moment of inertia you calculated before for the whole rectangle by the moment of inertia of these two rectangles you see here. So you multiply by two because there are two rectangles that have 70 as a base, is the base of this rectangles that are the holes in the in the cross section multiplied by 168 which is the height of these holes cubed divided by 12. Doing that you obtain the same value as the moment of inertia uh, regarding the axis xx as you did before applying the other method but this is simpler. Uh, actually I prefer this method to calculate moment of inertia of double symmetric cross section like this and the value is exactly the same as we calculated before so this formula works pretty well as well and is simpler to be uh, applied. This is all. Thank you very much.